Chlorine has many uses, but also may present hazards to individuals who handle it or work near it. Select each button to learn some basics about chlorine, including its forms, uses, and hazards. Chlorine is a chemical that may take the form of a gas, liquid, or solid. In its natural state, chlorine is a greenish-yellow gas with a penetrating and irritating odor. When exposed to very cold temperatures or high pressure, it condenses to a clear amber liquid. The solid form of chlorine, also known as calcium hypochlorite, comes in powder or tablet form. Chlorine has many uses. Because it is very good at killing bacteria and other microorganisms, municipal water treatment facilities use chlorine to treat the drinking water for the communities they serve. Hospitals and food processing plants use chlorine to disinfect equipment. Paper and textile manufacturing facilities use it as a whitening agent. It is also used in the manufacturing of pesticides, plastics, and solvents. Although chlorine has many uses, it also presents a variety of hazards. It is a highly reactive and potentially dangerous chemical. Chlorine is not flammable on its own, but can be under certain circumstances. For instance, if it combines with a combustible substance, it can cause a fire or explosion. A worker who is exposed to unsafe levels of fluorine may experience negative health symptoms, ranging from burning eyes to coughing to serious respiratory problems or even death. Because of the hazards associated with chlorine handling and use, industrial facilities and individual workers need to take appropriate safety precautions to prevent chlorine-related accidents and react appropriately when accidents occur. Use chlorine safely, you need to understand the physical and chemical properties of chlorine as well as its exposure limits. Select each image to learn about the properties and exposure limits associated with chlorine. Chlorine gas is two and a half times heavier than air, which means it will remain near the ground when released unless there is air movement to disperse it. It changes from a gas into a liquid when cooled to a temperature of minus 29 degrees Fahrenheit. It changes from a liquid to a solid at minus 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Chlorine that is present in liquid form will evaporate quickly when it makes contact with air. Chlorine is very toxic and can irritate the eyes, throat, and lungs. Because chlorine is corrosive, it can corrode plastics, rubbers, and other coatings. It is not flammable on its own, but because it is an oxidizer, it will support combustion under certain conditions. Chlorine is highly reactive with many other substances. It may cause an explosion or fire if it contacts hydrogen, alcohol, ammonia, butane, metal dust, or turpentine. When mixed with water, chlorine can oxidize most metals. One common reactive hazard you must be careful to avoid is accidentally mixing chlorine bleach with an incompatible acidic cleaning product, as doing so creates a toxic chlorine gas. A chemical's odor threshold is the lowest concentration of the chemical that is perceivable by the human sense of smell. Chlorine's odor threshold is about the same concentration of it that is safe to breathe. In other words, if you smell the characteristic pungent odor of chlorine, you are likely overexposed and should take action immediately to reduce the hazardous exposure by seeking fresh air. Chlorine is a toxic chemical. Inhaling small amounts, even for a short period of time, can result in severe adverse effects. The safe concentration of chlorine to breathe over a standard workday of eight hours, also known as the permissible exposure limit, or PEL, is 1.0 ppm. You should not exceed this level at any time during your work shift. If there is a risk you may experience a chlorine exposure that is above the PEL, you must use proper engineering controls and or respiratory protection to reduce your exposure to an acceptable level. A concentration of chlorine that exceeds the PEL can cause an individual to experience a variety of symptoms ranging in severity from minor to extremely serious and even fatal. Select each button to learn about the symptoms that could result from each type of chlorine exposure. Chlorine in the air or in water can irritate and burn the eyes. A relatively low level of exposure can cause serious injury to the eyes, including blurry vision, burning, irritation, and in extreme cases, vision loss. Direct contact with compressed liquefied chlorine can freeze the eye and may result in permanent eye damage or blindness. Chlorine inhalation may cause severe irritation of the nose, throat, and lungs. 
long-term exposure or a severe short-term exposure may lead to long-term lung problems, including lung injury, accumulation of fluid in the lungs, or asthma. Symptoms of these lung problems may include coughing, shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, and tightness in the chest. A person may unknowingly ingest chlorine-contaminated food or water. Symptoms of ingestion might include a burning mouth, throat pain or swelling, stomach pain, or vomiting. If chlorine enters a person's bloodstream, it can change the pH balance of the blood and cause low blood pressure. Chlorine in the air or in water can be absorbed into the skin, causing irritation, burning, or even permanent scarring. Direct contact with compressed liquefy chlorine can cause frostbite, the symptoms of which include numbness, prickling, itching, stiffness, or a burning sensation. The most severe cases of frostbite may result in blistering, tissue death, or infection. a practice exercise to test your knowledge. Read each statement at the left regarding the properties and effects of chlorine. Select the appropriate column to indicate whether that statement is true or false. When you are finished, select the check my answer button to see how you did. Why your answer was correct or incorrect. must put in place engineering controls in the form of machinery and equipment to adequately detect and reduce or eliminate unsafe chlorine exposures. Select each button to learn about some of them. Potential exposure to chlorine gas requires the use of gas detection devices designed to determine if the chlorine level is safe. If workers are continuously working in or near areas where chlorine is stored or processed, your facility should have chlorine gas detectors installed at fixed locations throughout the facility. These detectors sense when the amount of chlorine gas exceeds acceptable limits and warn workers with audible signals, flashing lights, and on-screen warnings. Gas detection equipment is especially important in confined spaces where chlorine exposures can be particularly deadly. However, since a fixed gas detection system may not be practical or cost-effective in a small space where workers perform infrequent maintenance tasks, your employer must provide portable chlorine gas detectors for you and your co-workers to use in these types of work areas. Where feasible, your facility must also have a well-designed ventilation system to reduce workers' potential exposures to chlorine. A good ventilation system uses fans, vents, and other devices to move contaminated air away from workers' breathing zones. A ventilation system may use a negative pressure vacuum type mechanism to keep chlorine from escaping through cracks or passage areas, or may push chlorine from an area near its generation point to a safe containment area. You must establish and you must comply with administrative controls in the form of policies and procedures intended to protect you and your coworkers from hazardous chlorine exposures. Select each button to learn about some administrative controls that you should follow to reduce your risk of an unsafe chlorine exposure. Store chlorine in an area that is separate from work areas, such as in an isolated detached building. Make sure chlorine storage areas are cool, dry, well ventilated, and out of direct sunlight. For instance, in the ground floor of a building. Keep chlorine away from heat and ignition sources and incompatible materials. Secure chlorine storage areas by restricting access to only authorized persons who must be in the area to complete necessary tasks. Secure chlorine cylinders according to the cylinder manufacturer's handling requirements to protect them from damage. Use a pressure regulator and piping system that is appropriate for the cylinder pressure and contents to prevent leaks. Post warning signs in areas where chlorine is present to indicate if there is a health and safety hazard or if there is a danger of fire or explosion. Label chlorine containers with appropriate hazard communication labels. Refer to a chlorine product safety data sheet or SDS to determine the hazards associated with using, handling, or working near the product. When handling or working near chlorine, wear appropriate personal protective equipment, including a respirator with the required assigned protection factor, or APF, if needed. Do not drag, roll, slide, or drop cylinders while you are moving them from one place to another. 
Activate and use all required ventilation devices, such as vacuum systems and fume hoods, in the chlorine handling area to protect yourself from inhalation hazards. Be aware that hazardous chlorine residue may remain in empty containers. Dispose of chlorine containers in an area that is separate from any disposal areas for incompatible materials. When you dispose of a chlorine container, make sure the container is closed to protect others from any remaining chlorine residue. Prepare used containers according to supplier or DOT transportation regulations. If you notice any unsafe condition, such as a chlorine odor, an unlabeled or damaged chlorine container, or a possible security breach in a chlorine storage or processing area, report it to your supervisor. If you will be working in an area or performing a task that may expose you to a hazardous level of chlorine, you must wear appropriate personal protective equipment, or PPE, as described by the SDS for the chlorine material you will be handling. Select each image to learn about that type of PPE and the protection it provides. After reviewing the content, select the X to return to and learn about the remaining images. To protect your eyes and face when pouring or transferring chlorine liquids, wear indirectly vented chemical safety goggles and a face shield. When working with or handling chlorine, wear appropriate chemical protective clothing including gloves, an apron, and boots. In some cases, you will need to wear chemical protective coveralls or a long-sleeved shirt and pants. When the risk of chlorine exposure is especially high, you should wear a chemical protective, full-body encapsulating suit. Whenever there is a risk that you will be exposed to chlorine above the PEL, you should wear respiratory protection. You must use a respirator with a sufficient assigned protection factor as predetermined by a qualified person based on an exposure assessment for the task you will be performing. If you do not know whether you need to wear a respirator or have not been informed regarding what type to use, do not perform the work. 